in a newly created world. A world where only time flowed and space expanded. There should have been no strife. But what became of that world? Because the human spirit is weak and incomplete, strife has spread. This world is being ruined by it. I find this state of things to be deplorable. Cyrus is a man of contradictions. It may be hard to see that at first considering he is incredibly headstrong in his position, unwavering in his belief that spirit is the root of all that is wrong with the world. And I admit that I did not give him a second thought any of the times that I played through Sinnoh. His conviction in a worldview that I do not agree with made me uninterested. But then I started researching the political and philosophical standpoints that the main antagonists of the Pokemon games represent, and I realized that Cyrus has a lot more to offer. We don't know much about his childhood, but we do know he grew up in Sunnyshore, and he was a brilliant student, although he shunned the company of others. According to his grandfather, it was the pressure of his parents' expectations that pushed young Cyrus to start tinkering with machines. While it is never stated outright, we can surmise that as a child, Cyrus befriended a Rotom that possessed a toy robot of his. The evidence comes from the old notebook that's found in Rotom's room in the Team Galactic building in Eterna City, and from Cyrus's interactions with Rotom Dex in Ultra Sun and Moon, and with Sophocles and Rotom in Pokemon Masters. This Rotom may have been one of Cyrus's only childhood friends. Not too surprisingly, Cyrus grows into a scientist and an engineer. What is perhaps surprising, though, is that he also grows from an asocial child into the leader of a major organization, capable of giving impassioned motivational speeches, capable of manipulating all of Team Galactic, including all of its commanders, into following his lead. Cyrus has learned to be charismatic. We also see that adult Cyrus presents himself as emotionless. He values knowledge and embodies willpower, but he rejects emotion. When the player character defeats him at the Team Galactic headquarters in Veilstone, he says, You are indeed strong, and the basis of your power is your compassion toward Pokemon. How wasteful. Such emotions are but mere illusions. And like all illusions, they fade over time, until death banishes them forever. That is why I have abandoned all emotions as useless sentimentality." But that is not entirely true. We know he used to be friends with a Rotom, although you could dismiss that as being in the past before he abandoned emotion. We also know that he was able to get his Golbat to evolve into a Crobat. But again, that may not necessarily indicate a friendship per se. The term in Japanese is natsuki-do, meaning degree of attachment, leaving the possibility open for a connection born from other feelings besides friendship. Cyrus seems to acknowledge at least the possibility of joy when he asks the player at Spear Pillar, What is truly the ultimate to you? What do you consider perfection? The most beautiful thing? The joy that shines the brightest? And we know Cyrus has not abandoned all emotions, at least not successfully. When he's defeated in the distortion world, he bursts and admits that he feels rage, hatred, frustration. He singles out negative emotions. He may not be incapable of feeling positive emotions, but he focuses on the negative ones. Why? Let's get an expert opinion in here. My name is Gano Hasanbegovic. I have a master's degree in mental health counseling. I am currently an associate mental health counselor, and I also have a bachelor's degree in psychology and philosophy. In particular, my philosophy degree focused on ethics. In my experience and training as a therapist, early childhood traumas um, can create developmental issues in understanding and processing emotion. Sometimes, People who are on, uh, on the spectrum of autism disorders can struggle with social situations in life because they have a hard time processing and understanding their own emotions and they 
have a hard time picking up on other people's emotional expressions through body language and facial expressions and voice tone and things like that. Another thing is antisocial personality disorder. In the media, it's often portrayed as, you know, people who are like serial killers or mass murderers or Hitler type folks, but it's actually a little more common than that and also doesn't go to that extreme. It's mostly characterized as uh, inability to empathize with people and empathy is reliant on this uh, on this ability of understanding someone's emotion and being able to mirror it and that can end up causing a lot of frustration in people and you know cause them to become like social pariahs or you know to be made fun of or to just you know to not fit in and cause its own traumas it can be understandable for someone dealing with this barrier of emotion to then decide that Emotion is stupid and bad. I'm not good at it. Why do people do things based on emotion? It makes no sense whatsoever. I hate it. I don't get it. We often see that people try to cope with difficult emotions by shutting them away, saying like, okay, I need to get rid of them. I need to not feel them. The thing with emotions is we humans can't selectively shut out emotions. If we shut out some emotions, we end up shutting them all out. A lot of the times we see people who spend so much time shutting their out their emotions to try to cope, the best that they can do is get to numbness. And it's like, that's what a good day means for them. It means that they feel numb and they feel nothing. No happiness, no sadness, nothing like that. It kind of creates this situation where you don't find yourself in situations where you're creating happiness, where happiness can even come out, but situations where the sadness can come out still arise. So it's like you're trying to shut out your emotions, which usually can't happen 100% of the time and isn't a perfect process. But then events keep triggering you and keep happening to bring up the bad emotions. So then it makes you feel like all oh, the only emotions that exist are hate and negativity and sadness and anger and all those things. Because the, by this process of shutting out your emotions, you're not letting yourself even have the potential to have experiences that are going to make you happy. Antisocial personality disorder and difficulty with empathy in particular stand out to me because whenever other characters argue that they get their joy, their meaning from their friendships, their connections to Pokemon and to each other, Cyrus simply can't relate. Because of that, Cyrus is often called a nihilist, a person who believes that life is meaningless. Values and ethics are worthless because if there is no reason why we are here, none of it matters anyway. Nihilism is often associated with pessimism and even with an impulse to destroy. All of this aligns fairly well with Cyrus. He is a very negative person. His impulse to destroy is nearly unstoppable. And he clearly has no regard for traditional morals, considering he is willing to steal and abuse Pokemon to accomplish his goals. But Cyrus doesn't believe that life is meaningless and not worth living. Cyrus believes that this life is not worth living. This world of ours is a crude one, he says in his speech to Team Galactic. In a word, it is incomplete. It has been, and always will be, a struggle to survive in this world. We humans and Pokemon are likewise incomplete. Because we are so lacking, we fight, we maim. It is ugly. I hate the incompleteness. That we are all incomplete, I hate it with my entire body and being. The world should be complete. The world must change. He does want life to continue. He just wants it to continue without suffering. And he identifies the incomplete spirit as the source of suffering. Somebody needs a massage. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, Cyrus's position is a Buddhist one. One of the precepts of Buddhism is that to reach nirvana, to attain enlightenment, one must let go of all worldly attachments, and that includes emotion. Enlightened beings may still experience positive and negative sensations, but they don't respond to those with emotions like desire or anguish. Cyrus, though, takes this to the extreme. He takes a page out of the medieval Catholic's handbook. The Crusaders justified breaking the Ten Commandments and not following the teachings of Jesus by telling themselves that the spread of Catholicism was the greater good. They justified inflicting some suffering, actually a lot of suffering, by what they perceived as a net reduction 
in suffering. Cyrus similarly justifies his evil Buddhist crusade. Everyone should step back and view things from a bigger perspective. Yes, a bigger perspective. One that is on a universal scale. My name is Cyrus. I seek the power to create a new world. A world without strife. To Cyrus, the incomplete spirit is the source of suffering. He is the only one who sees this. Therefore, to end suffering, he must eliminate spirit by all means necessary. And there may be a reason for this philosophical standpoint, too. People with antisocial personality disorder often can find meaning in things, but it comes from something that is more based on logic or on like something that is quote unquote observational or objective. Someone with antisocial personality disorder might not understand like why is it wrong to lie to someone if it gets me what I want. But they can understand, for example, lying can be bad because then it'll create negative consequences for other people, which will create all these other bad things. And I shouldn't do that because it'll end up being worse for me or worse for other things. So like Cyrus, we see that he does care that people experience suffering. And he does care that there are problems in the world. That doesn't preclude him from having an issue with empathy. His care could come from this logical thought process of like, I experience problems in my life. I see other people experience problems in their lives. These problems kind of come from emotions. It's probably better for everyone if no one experiences problems. People can live smoother lives. So therefore, emotion is bad and we should create a world where people don't make problems and suffering. This ends up lending itself to a philosophical standpoint called consequentialism, where what matters is logic and consequences and being able to like mathematically suss out what is a good and bad decision based on what the consequences are. For example, stealing a Pokemon causes both the Pokemon and its original trainer to feel sad. Therefore, it's a bad thing to do. But if by stealing a Pokemon you can save 10 lives, it's a good thing to do. The positive value of saving 10 lives is greater than the negative value of inflicting sadness on two individuals. So the balance of morality shifts. This seems like what Cyrus has drawn himself to. And it makes sense because if someone who, as someone who relies on logic, hates emotion, they would kind of draw themselves to an external ethical standpoint that is all based on trying to make emotionless, logical, mathematical decisions for what is good and bad. Cyrus is quite Machiavellian. The end justifies the means is the common way of summarizing the ethical views of Niccolo Machiavelli. He argued that cruelties could be used for positive outcomes. Lying, manipulation, theft, even murder might all be justified by a desired outcome. And while Cyrus is not often deliberately cruel, for example, when he's finished with the Lake Guardians, he lets the player release them, he certainly has no problem using cruelty to serve his greater purpose. Mars kidnaps the staff of Valley Windworks to steal energy. Charon hurts the Lake Guardians to create the Red Chain. Cyrus himself admits to lying to his minions to keep them compliant. You heard my speech, I take it. <laughs> a big lie, of course. It's true insofar as my intention is to create a new world. But that world isn't for the likes of Team Galactic. I seek an entirely new world solely for myself. If not, it could never be the complete and perfect world. You've seen my minions of Team Galactic. You yourself must know that they are uniformly useless and incomplete. I was always a little confused by his choice of the word incomplete. Cyrus never explains what it is that he thinks is missing. The word he uses in Japanese is hukanzen, which can translate to incomplete, but also to imperfect or defective. So I asked translator Nob Ogasawara if he remembered why he made that choice. He says, I think I wanted to convey Cyrus's arrogance in believing that he was the missing piece in completing the evolution of humanity. That is, of course, consistent with Cyrus's blatant god complex. He says it explicitly. This world cannot be molded into the ultimate world I seek. 
It's far easier to create an entirely new world than to change this one. A new world in which I am the ruler of all things. I shall become a deity. Cyrus has the hubris of a tech mogul who sees no hope for this world and would rather just ship humans off to another planet. He thinks there is a technological solution to our problems. Even if our problems are our emotions, he thinks he can engineer a solution so long as he has the power of the legendary Pokemon at his side. Cyrus wants to create a new world where time flows and space expands, where there is knowledge and willpower, but no emotion. Perhaps if he does see himself as the missing piece, he might even want to replace emotion with himself, with his vision, with his leadership. Ethics is a complicated field, but for what it's worth, most consequentialists would not agree with Cyrus, or with Machiavelli for that matter. Consequentialism seeks to achieve the ideal moral outcomes by judging the value of the consequences of each course of action. Perhaps in theory this could be done unemotionally, entirely through reason, but nothing is ever so simple in practice. Judging what is a positive outcome is not objective. Judging what kinds of suffering are worth putting people through is not objective. It's not even objective to decide whose well-being or whose perspective of well-being should be favored. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cyrus takes a very self-centered view here. His perspectives are the only ones that matter. He will impose as much suffering as he deems necessary because he knows what the best outcomes are. Even the, the things that seem altruistic are like selfish. You know, it's like altruism for the purpose of making his life easier. Selfish altruism. An oxymoron for sure, but one that seems to define Cyrus's worldview. A man of contradictions. I did also just want to say that, you know, while we're talking about people with mental health disorders and with things like autism and antisocial personality and trauma, we talk about that not in a causal way, not saying that it's because he has this X disorder that caused him to go down this path. With anyone who ends up going and doing horrible things, it's never because of one thing or another. It's never just a philosophical standpoint or just a mental health disorder. There's always a combination of your biological predisposition and your genes, your individual personality factors, any sort of physical or mental health contributor, environmental factors of what you went through growing up, and then also some randomness or unknown factors. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Gano for their participation and their help with the script. Thank you also to Bulba Trainer who helped me come up with the basis of this video, and to Nabuga Sawara for always being so willing to answer my translation questions on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like, share it with a friend, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be doing more deep dives into the philosophy and the politics of other Pokemon villains, so you can look out for those. Finally, thank you to those of you who make these videos possible with your contributions through Patreon or through YouTube channel memberships, including Gano and especially luxury patron Ethan from Chicago. I'll see you in the next chapter.